so same as yesterday the Arnold Expo is complete and by anyone's measure it was a complete fucking success so this is the only Arnold no, blah 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 no not the only Arnold this is the only Expo that I've ever been to uh, you know I came last year too but this is the only one so I'm sure there'll be a uh, an Olympia Expo appearance as well. I um I can tell just from talking, I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit. Half of that could just be, <clears throat> you know, because I've got to cough a little bit. But I better enjoy the next week of chilling, because you got to remember, I need to do all of this again, but in the UK. So that's going to be super cool, because a lot of the gyms that you know, Fuad and those guys are telling me that we're going to check out. They're going to be super cool. <clears throat> and like, weight is weight. You know I'm not too picky. Uh, sometimes. But for the most part, I like to think as long as you've got enough, you know, loadable movements. Right? Pull downs, bench, dumbbells, random shit like that. If you've got enough of that floating around you, should be able to get a good workout. So there's nothing like insanely necessary about a super fancy pants gym. But it is nice. Let's see if I can uh, let's see if I can get my little phone pay working here and I can make my way to um, American Barbell. So the whole uh, the whole hostile cr hostile crew we're going over there to you know, kind of get some group pictures. But I am also going to do my cardio afterwards. So, I didn't actually notice any, like, cardio machines that they had there the last time I went. But I know that they're there. Any stinking gym has a seated bike and a treadmill or whatever else. Whatever floats your boat. Personally, I think we all know what I like. The seated bike where the pedals are you know, kind of way in front of you. They're not like right below you, like an actual bike. And, you know, what's the reason for it? Is it the most effective form of cardio? Is uh, is stimulating your quads in that manner going to make them, you know, burn the most fat and in induce lipolysis? No, not, uh, not exactly. Or at least that's not the reason that I would do it like that. The whole idea of cardio is just doing something, and it could be anything. You don't have to sit on the bike and pedal. You'd be playing basketball, whatever. You'd kind of want to have a heart monitor or something like Apple Watch to make sure you're up in that like 140 beats per minute, 150 beats per minute range. That's about what I like. But as long as your heart rate is elevated for you know, a significant period of time, then that's going to count as your cardio. So for me, the seated bike, for one thing, is just kind of the easiest for me. I like it the most. Because something like a Stairmaster <clears throat> or a Stair Stepper, it's a very intense movement. Like you're doing a lot of actual physical work because you're, I mean, you're walking up fucking steps. So that's a little bit too, um, I don't want to say traumatic as if walking up stairs is trauma. But it is going to be tiring more quickly. So if that's your thing, if for whatever reason that appeals to you, then do the Stairmaster. Love it. Uh, but for me, the seated bike, I can burn what the machine says is 300 calories in 30 minutes. Which, whether or not that's right or wrong, it's pretty consistent across all the different machines. So that's just kind of the level at which uh, you know, I always stop at. But when I'm on the seated bike, not only do I just sort of like the feeling of it compared to any other form that I've got at my disposal, but I can also play on my phone pretty easily. Because I've done cardio on a treadmill a ton, uh, or just like actually riding you know, an actual bike, like around town or whatever, like up and down hills stuff. But the seated bike I like the most is because all you're doing is pedaling with your legs, and your torso is upright, just standing still. So I'm sitting there playing on my phone, the time passes like nothing. If you're on the treadmill, it gets a little trickier because you kind of have to, you're wobbling as you're walking. And then stair stepper. Hmm. Ooh, oh my goodness. Nobody on the Stairmaster is going to be playing on their phone. Uh, if you're watching a movie and you put it up on the 
the little dash, then I guess that's a different situation. But 30 minutes of cardio, either probably after we finish our little, our little gathering and everybody rolls. And then later tonight, I'm not sure what the lift is going to be. Um, so yesterday, me, Jacob, and Nick, we all did arms and a little bit of shoulders. I did like three sets of side delts just because I wanted to kind of pump them up because we were all sort of posing down. And I, I was going to stop. I didn't want to do shoulders. I was like, yeah, I'll just do, I'll just do arms and then cut it. But when I look over and you know, they're both fucking jacked, getting a shoulder pump. I don't want to be small when we did a pose down. So I decided to jump in on a few. But since I did arms yesterday, and yeah, I'm not exactly sure what I want to freaking do. What will the lift be tonight? I did arms. We did back. So not arms or back. Uh, I don't know if I'm really full. My knee feels better from after I kind of crashed my bike and smacked it into the concrete. I think I should probably get a leg day going. Yeah, so it looks like tonight's lift is going to be legs. Uh, probably not anything too crazy in terms of loading. You know, I'll do leg extensions, hamstring curls, maybe some RDLs like normal. But I don't think that doing super crazy heavy squats is necessarily in my best interest just because I can still tell that my uh, my left knee is just a little tender in the uh, in the patella region and I'm not sure if you've ever well honestly it's kind of probably more common than I think but if you've ever got like a sore elbow or a sore knee or wherever where it's kind of a junction of in which tension gets really concentrated Right? Like when you're doing bicep curls, or if you're doing really any movement, you we don't typically get like a strain in your pec or like you feel really sore, like right in the middle of your bicep in the muscle. Typically, most of the soreness that you know kind of ends up building up is always in sort of junctions of tendons and you know muscle connections, because it's a pretty small area. Like I don't know if, how much you know about anatomy. But if you're looking at your tendons compared to your fucking biceps that are connected to them, all of that tension, which is being you know, pushed through this very large surface area, is all getting condensed down to just a little fucking nub. Now, of course, your tendons are super fucking strong, but that doesn't mean that they can't be strained. But what I'm really trying to get into by bringing that up is if that's your problem, like if with pushdowns right on the, uh, the tip of your elbow, it's real tender or leg extensions, if right below your kneecap or around that area is pretty sore, like when you're doing leg extensions or squats or whatever. Uh, I'm not saying this is going to fix your problem, but I think that's pretty much a cue, at least for me, to just spend extra long warming up and gradually expose myself to the weight. Like if I just walked into the gym completely fresh and I tried to do an insanely heavy set of like straight or easy bar pushdowns or whatever, right? Your skull crushers, like something super heavy, but you know, a weight that I could move without hurting my tricep or something. Even though I could still move the weight, my elbows would be on fucking fire. When I start an arm day, I'm starting with like straight bar pushdowns, really light, really starting from the bottom of, or I guess the top of the stack, and I'm gradually moving downward, 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 heavier, 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 more tension in my elbow until just from kind of being exposed to the weight I feel like it just kind of gets more comfortable I mean you're literally warming up and you're gonna feel better so if that's you don't like don't just totally knock off uh, push downs or triceps or leg extensions or squats you know, don't just say oh my knee hurts fuck it if you can do something which is gonna make you have a good workout or sort of work around a little bit of uh, tenderness or soreness or whatever you're dealing with. That's what you got to do. And if you've got either working up to it, warming up consistently and well as one option, and skipping a body part just because it's a little tender and you don't want to deal with it as the other, 
look, I think this is the kind of decision that's going to decide whether you're going to be a big lifter or a big lifter or a fucking small lifter. And maybe not even big or small. That's more like, you know, genetics, diet, and supplementation of multiple degrees. But I'll say whether you're going to make progress or not. That's what we should really be focused on. So, what else is there to discuss? Oh my god. So, this is a... This isn't really a mainstream kind of guy, but... When I was at the hostile booth, I sort of recognized a face. It was a dad and his son. You know, I'm like, where have I seen this guy before? You would not believe it. Any fellow misfits out there. There's the infamous Dale Chuck E. Cheese chance. He rolled up. <laughs> I was dying to see him and Brad and Lenny and everybody, but it was just him. But no, that's fucking surreal. So, anybody who knows about that, you know that that was a real fucking honor. Oh, that was fucking killer. We were doing a calf check and everything. Ripping into Lenny. Like, let's see Lenny with these calves. That's really cool, though. But, yeah, it was crazy. I mean, it's, um... Like, I feel like in the last, like, three videos, I've been saying the exact same shit. I'm like, oh, it's so crazy seeing everybody in person. But, I mean, the reason I keep fucking reiterating that is just because of how fucking true it is. You know? I mean, there really is... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's much that can compare to seeing people that you've only seen on your phone or in videos and stuff to actually seeing them in person, getting to have a chat with them. So, uh, this isn't everybody, but a couple of, you know, big names they got to see. Samson Dowd, of course. We, uh, I've seen him a ton because we were all, we were all kind of together. Nick Walker. I got a little chat with, uh, Jay Cutler and Phil Heath and everybody. I got a few pictures of Lee Priest. We, uh, we kind of recreated that, um, oh my goodness, like that Tom Platt's tricep flex picture. But, yeah, we were, I mean, we were both wearing like long sleeves. Or I was wearing long sleeves and it was in like a hotel. Give it, um, give me 20 more pounds. Super shredded. And then that picture can be recreated. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you know the picture that I'm referencing, but. I don't think in any way am I close to doing it real justice. That's going to take some time. But, you know, it was freaking surreal. So, back to the grindstone like normal. Lifts, cardio, food. You got to remember, as cool as all this stuff was, I wouldn't be anywhere near here if I wasn't lifting on a daily basis. And same goes for everybody who's at the expo. Like, these, uh, kind of the fun part like this, it doesn't come until after making some serious gains. So for me, I kind of, I think I like the gains part the most. So this is just an extra fucking treat. But let's, uh, let's either cut to a sweaty post-cardio pose down or just back to the car. I, I'll get, if I don't end up, like, setting up the tripod while I do my cardio, I will, like, just get a little phone video because uh, I didn't realize it but there's some skeptics out there or every time I uh, post a video where I'm driving to do my cardio and the clip just goes straight from the car to the car again I'm seeing more and more comments you didn't even do your cardio you're lying <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking great no but uh, let's uh, let's cut to whatever's next maybe I'll add some some meals in here just to make this video more interesting but I guess we'll have to see all right I uh I might have to mess with the audio because the speaker's right above me but 30 minutes cardio complete fucking drenched let's run through some classics here let's run through some basics uh, I'm uh I'm definitely not gonna put this shirt back on I'm gonna go get it different clean one. Oh. Perfect. Let's see. Hmm. 
Okay, that's about everything. So, let's get back in the car and discuss some random topic. All right, a very successful, well, not only team trip, but cardio session for me at American Barbell. You know what? I don't think people would, I don't think people would disagree if we call this the Mecca of Ohio. Really fucking cool gym. Very, oh, this is something that a lot of my, or a lot of the gyms that I go to, are like my school gym and everywhere else. Uh, people just do not understand how to utilize space. Like a lot of, and like, I'm not a gym designer, so I guess I don't really know. Like I don't have an awesome perspective of like maybe what I'm talking about, but I do go to the gym a lot. You'd think I'd have at least a little bit of an understanding of this shit. It's like I see so much wasted space at a lot of gyms. And a lot of the times, I think that's really the only constraint, you know? Like, you can add new machines over time. But if you have, like, five feet between every piece of, like, every leg extension and hamstring curl, or there's just a ton of, like, kind of blank space, how are you going to fit a bunch of machines in there? So they're really efficient at this gym. Tons Plus, all, like new prime equipment cables fancy ass dumbbells my only gripe dumbbells only go up to 150s that's become more and more of a problem for me but 150s are still a that's about right you know if i go any heavier it's really just because i want to feed my ego with a heavy set because i can do the 150s for you know when i'm fresh maybe a set of 20 and then honestly the next set i'd probably only get like 13 and then 11 maybe 9 or something so I can still get a I can still get a lot of work done with the 150s and maybe that should just be my approach to say I shouldn't go any heavier because I don't need to but uh, maybe this is just me but if I'm capable of repping out the 170s for a good set of like 12 then I want to I freaking want to and I know it'll be a good set as well and that kind of just gets me fired up for my training, you know? Like, it's going to be a little bit trickier for me to get really riled up to do, um, you know, like a set of dumbbell curls where hold it for 10 seconds. Mm. Yeah. Maybe not 10, but like, you know, hold it for like five seconds, and then back down really slow. Like, I kind of like the, what's the word I'm trying to think of here? I kind of like the primal nature of moving around a lot of weight kind of quickly, right? Like I'd say a more uh, potentially intelligent, I'm not saying smarter, but like a methodical set of leg extensions where like I hold it for a few seconds at the top, back down really slow, really slow, really slow on the way back, hold it. Like stuff like that, I do like those sets and I do do them, but eh, it doesn't really get me going as much as like a set of the stack and just, you know, really quick rapid reps with re within reason, of course, and then burning out in that way, it just it just does it for me. It just freaking does it for me. So, considering that you know I was just getting exposed to the freakiest of the freaky, I'm talking 300 pounders plus. How did that treat my body dysmorphia? I uh, I feel like I haven't talked about body dysmorphia for a while. Uh, do I feel absolutely inadequate like I want to put my pump cover back on uh, when I'm you know, posing down with Samson Dowda because he's literally like 50 pounds of lean mus muscular was I about to say lean tissue heavier than me uh, actually probably that's not even true more like oh probably 80 pounds an astronomical amount of fucking muscle you know yeah, not really I've never really been and I, I think this is a good approach for everybody, but I've never really been too uh, comparative when I think about my progress, except for maybe people who are a little bit closer to my level. You know, like if I'm, uh, or if I see pictures of somebody and they're, me and him are pretty, 
or comparable in size, maybe just a little bit ahead of me, that could get me excited. Like, okay, I want to catch up because that's a very feasible, tangible, like short-term goal. Like, okay, this, uh, oh, I want to catch up to so-and-so, whatever, right? Like guys who are kind of in my weight class. But seeing dudes like that, I mean, it just kind of gets me excited in a whole different way. Like, just kind of hyped up to be lifting at all, you know? Like, I don't know if you've, if you've never seen these guys in person, do not underestimate the freak factor. It's just fucking sweet. Just fucking sweet. But, yeah, certainly. I can't imagine anybody went to the expo <sighs> and left without a little bit more excitement and a little bit more vigor to go lift some weights and get big. And not necessarily big. Could be whatever your fitness goal is. Could be small. Could be you're trying to lose body fat, you're trying to get smaller, get back into high school fighting shape, or get strong. Yeah, fuck man, whatever. I, this is one thing which uh, I do kind of play into a little bit. You know, I'm gonna if somebody makes a CrossFitter joke, I'm gonna laugh. But in all realms of the gym, and this could be anything, but since I'm talking about it, I'm gonna relate it back to the gym and weights. But you know, I don't see power lifters at my school gym and think, oh, those fucking dopes. Look at them over there doing three rep, three, doing RPE seven, or like. If you have that mentality, you're just like kind of a fucking hater it by nature. Ah, oh, Jesus, come on! I see that shit, and I'm fucking fired up. Because even though it's not about the weight, I do like being able to throw around some serious weight and kind of try to keep up in a way. But never when it comes to anything like their one rep maxes. I think if I. Uh, Mm. Oh, goodness. So I've only ever deadlifted 405. I did 405 for one rep successfully in high school. And the next week I tried 450. I failed it. And I just never touched deadlifts again. So I think right now, in terms of just pure musculature, I think I'd be capable of like, eh, probably pretty high. Maybe 600, 650. Uh, hard to say, but I can almost guarantee I'm going to you know, snap my spine in half or like, pull my hamstring or whatever else because that's just not what I'm training for. But what I'm, I was trying to circle back around and say when it comes to seeing guys push it, no matter what vector that their you know, progress is pointing towards, anybody that can really separate themselves from average and make substantial progress and be able to kind of show that off. That's just fucking impressive, you know? Like, if you sort of look at it as a very, kind of like as a chart or whatever, like x-axis, you know, x-axis, y-axis, if zero, zero, right in that center origin, that's where everybody starts, right? Average schmo, whatever. The further away you can get from your origin, like the larger distance you can separate yourself from just a baseline, you know, dude, the cooler and it doesn't matter what that's in you know like oh, if you get really good at anything you're kind of just gonna see a whole new world open up to you and I'm not even saying that from experience I'm saying like you know one of my friends he used to tell me uh, he'd be telling me about his brother and his brother's a little zany like not zany what am I talking about he's a little nerdy like he's always like hours upon hours of overwatch a day and I'd hear that and I go, oh, all right, well, fucking wasting his time. That was kind of my initial reaction. Uh, and then he tells me later, like, yeah, so he kind of got into computer programming, you know, so he's, he's working on a lot of programming stuff. I'm like, all right, well, that's pretty cool. And then now I'm hearing, like, he's getting, you know, six figure offers from, like, Google and other, like, you know, uh, tech companies to do shit, all because he's just been sitting in his room coding his ass off, learns about everything, just consistently practicing it. And then that's like his main deal. You know, that's his primary fucking directive. Get better at... I mean, I don't even know. Do not, do not ask me the first thing about coding. But, like, stuff like that. If you can be... I'm not even talking top dog. But if you can kind of get to the point where 
whatever field you like and you kind of you know, point yourself towards working at, the better you get at it, you, uh, it kind of starts to pay dividends, you know? Like, I'm trying to think of some other examples. Nothing's really coming straight to my mind. But that would make sense, right? And I cannot stress enough how important I think it is that no matter what this thing is that you kind of put yourself into, you have to enjoy it yourself. Like you yourself and no one else has to be the one who enjoys the process of working towards it. Um, I was just talking to a couple of people today, just we we're kind of getting into, um, or no, no, not, not today, it was a couple days ago, but we were getting into the fact how like, like we were talking about what I did was when I was younger, like sports and whatnot. And you know, I was saying a lot of the times, cause I was doing like gymnastics and diving and those are kind of, uh, I don't know how I would categorize them sport wise, but I guess same with everything. But I saw a lot of parents who were really, they, I could tell the kids had a lot of pressure to perform. So, and even you know, up into high school, college to the point where if they didn't do well, they were kind of you know, motivated by just not being reprimanded by their parents later. You know, you'd hate to, you'd hate to like belly flop in front of, you know, a hundred parents at like a diving meet and then have to hear your mom or something say, uh, no, this is, and this is not like me saying my own story. Like this is stuff that I've seen before. And it's like, you gotta go up to your parents and they're just like yelling at you. Like that's just not a, it's not a form of motivation. You know, that's, um, uh, I almost want to say like desperation, you know, like to have a pressure put on you to perform in some field or some, some something that you yourself aren't really passionate about, but then you're not really doing it for you. You're just doing it to please somebody else. And if you look at it in a little bit of more of a overall abstract kind of way, it's like they're living your life for you, you know? So the only times that I see people really kill it, and not just in person, but like on, in videos on social media, whatever, it's, it's usually just when it's people doing it because they want to. It's their thing. They do it because they enjoy it, either because of the process or the end result or just whatever reason. It's an internal motivation. So I guess I'm not really giving you any advice. I'm just sort of saying that you got to find something that you enjoy pushing yourself at. But if that's not lifting, that does not mean that you don't get to go hard in the gym. Because even if your thing isn't the gym, and like you're, um, you want to become the world, you, you want to become the best woodworker in North America and make like $30,000 desk tables, if that's your shit, you're going to have a better time if you've got some decent uh, cardio as well as some muscle mass on your frame. So if your thing is the gym, go extra hard at it. But if your thing isn't and it's just some other random shit, you still gotta go hard. So that's kind of the part where I, uh, you know, I jump in with the lifting aspect of it. So in terms of the bulk itself, it's going to continue. We're nowhere near done. And this weekend was a wrench in my gears. This weekend did not help me bulk wise uh, because I, oh, I, mean, I just didn't have time to fucking get my meals together. And that's, I'm not saying, like, I was in a, like, really, I'm just saying I was irresponsible. And I didn't pack enough meals to, you know, hit my calorie goals. So I really hope I don't go home, step on the scale, and I'm, like, low 250s. Because I know after a few days of eating, I'm going to bounce back carb-wise. Even if I dropped five pounds over the last week, or over the last few days, it's going to go back on like nothing. Because that's not actually you know, muscular weight, it's just water and carbs, but it still kind of sucks. Nobody wants to wake up lighter when they're trying to bulk up, you know what I'm saying? But so, I stay there chatting for a while, but it's now three o'clock. Plan is to go home, hydrate my ass off, eat a little bit of food, not a, 
maybe not like a massive meal, because I still have to hit legs pretty soon, but a good probably 1,000, maybe 1,500 calories or so. And then legs tomorrow. So you get to tune in for that. And then we'll be back on our on our regular regularly scheduled broadcasts. No more no more cardio videos, at least for a little while. Yeah, we can get back to some actual training. But the training this weekend, which was me, Jacob, and Nick for the most part, you gotta go to the uh, the hostile YouTube channel for that. Plus, that's where you know we had a we actually made like vlogs of the Arnold. Mainly, you know, at the Hostile Subs booth, but we got some other kind of moments in there, too. I, uh, I'm kind of excited to rewatch those, because I guess, in a way, I already kind of saw it, because I, I was there, but watching the video, I'm sure I forgot some of the stuff I said, so hopefully there's some funny moments in there. But I think that's all I got. So, I'm going to drive home, try not to take a nap so I can train at a reasonable hour then legs so I will see you next time